This is question number 9. We're told the cubic polynomial f of x is defined by f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3. In the first part for 2 marks, we need to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 2. We can simply write the remainder will be equal to the f of 2. I'm just going to evaluate through the function x is equal to 2. So r will be equal to 4 lots of 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 7 lots of 2 to the power 1, which is 2, minus 3. So the remainder will be 32 minus 14 minus 3. So the remainder is going to be 32 minus 17. That gives me now 15. In the second part for 6 marks, we need to show that 2x plus 1 is a factor of f of x and hence factorise f of x completely. I'm just going to write now if 2x plus 1 is a factor, so just jotting this down, is a factor, we can say then the f of minus 1 half will be equal to 0. So I'm going to use this property and show that if I evaluate minus 1 half through the function, we will get naught. So f of minus 1 half, that's going to give me 4 lots of minus 1 half cubed, which is minus 1 over 8. Minus 7 lots of minus 1 half, minus 3. So we can see that's minus 1 half, plus 7 over 2, and then I'm just going to write this as 6 over 2. So from this, we've got minus 7 over 2 plus 7 over 2, which is going to give us now 0. So we can say that this is going to be a factor. Therefore, we can say that 2x plus 1 is a factor. So just jotting this down, let's just put this in the right place. That's going to give me 0, and we can simply state that. OK, at this stage now, I need to factorise this fully. There are a couple of different approaches that you could take. You could take the approach of polynomial long division, or you could equate coefficients. I'm going to equate coefficients and say that my linear factor of 2x plus 1 multiplied by some quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c must now be equal to our cubic 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3. I'm going to consider the terms equate coefficients and then write this as a linear factor multiplied by a quadratic. So we've got now terms in x cubed. So if we look at terms in x cubed, on the left-hand side, I'm going to have 2ax cubed. On the right-hand side, I've got 4x cubed. 2a is equal to 4. Therefore, a is going to be equal to 4 over 2, which is 2. Let's now consider the constant. So on the left-hand side, we've got 1 times by c and that must be equal to the constant on the right, therefore c will be equal to minus 3. I'm now going to look at terms in x squared, so terms in x squared, on the left hand side we'll have 2bx squared plus 1ax squared must be equal now to 0x squared. Now we know that a is 2, so 2b plus 2 is equal to 0, we can see that b will be equal to minus 1. So therefore, b is equal to minus 1. So what I can now state is the following. I'm just going to write this out. I can state that 2x plus 1 multiplied now by 2x squared minus x minus 3 will now be equal to 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3. I'm going to see if I can factor this quadratic factor into the product of two linear factors. And it looks like I can. So all I'm going to do is write the f of x is equal now to the quantity 2x plus 1. Just looking if I can factor this, that looks to be x plus 1 multiplied by 2x and then minus 3. Let's check that works. 2x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 3. So yes, that will give us exactly what we want. So that now is f of x expressed as a product of three linear factors. OK, in the third part for four marks, we need to solve the equation 4 cos cubed theta minus 7 cos theta minus 3 is equal to 0 for theta between 0 and 2 pi. We need to give each solution for theta in an exact form. 
if we look at this now, we've got that x would be equal to cos theta. So what we're actually looking at now is the following. We are looking at the f of, instead of x, the f of cos theta to be equal to zero. So all I'm going to do is sub this in. In this particular case, x is cos theta, we want this to be zero. So we'll have 2 cos theta plus 1 multiplied by cos theta plus 1 multiplied by 2 cos theta minus 3 must be equal to zero. So these linear factors all multiplied equal zero. So we can say from this that cos theta, and just considering it now the first one, cos theta would equal minus one half. The second one, cos theta would be equal to minus one. Or the third one, cos theta would be equal to three over two. This is not possible for real values. So we can say no real solutions. So all we need to do is consider the first two. Cos theta has a max now of 1 and a minimum of minus 1. So we're looking at these two right here. So if we consider, we want the exact values. It's entirely up to you on how you solve these. You could find the principal value and consider subsequent solutions. You could graph this. You could use the unit circle. It's entirely up to you. Each of these is going to give us one of our exact solutions. So here is cos theta between 0 and 2 pi. We have this point here, 0, 1. We have pi by 2, 0. We have pi, and then we have minus 1. 3 pi by 2, 0. 2 pi, 1. So what we're looking at then is minus 1 half. Our first solution is going to be just here, and that's going to be theta now, so theta, and just put in this here, therefore theta is equal to 2 pi by 3. By symmetry, we will have one now 2 pi by 3 back, so that's going to be 4 pi by 3. That gives us now the solutions for cos theta is equal to minus 1 half, which of course you can do on a calculator. So on the calculator, if you want to get a principal value, shift mode 4 with radians and take the inverse cosine of negative 0.5 this will give you 2 pi by 3 which is this one and by symmetry we know that the same value back from 2 pi will give us that minus 1 half this one right here we can say that there is going to be one solution and theta will be equal to pi so 3 in total we can see minus 1 is here and then our other two are going to be just here lots of different ways of solving that Generally, I wouldn't graph it, but I think as we're using radians, it's often easier to see it and get some intuition. Entirely up to you. Three solutions in the interval for theta between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi by 3, pi and 4 pi by 3. No real solutions for cos theta is equal to 3 over 2. If I just put this on, it's saying now where this is 3 over 2, just here, 1 and a half. We can see the curve is never going to intersect that line.